Business correspondent Susan Lee, Apple CEO Tim Cook said this. I don't, first of all, I don't really focus on the short-term gyrations of the market. I, I think uh, for me uh, and with the way we run the company, we work for the long term. And I see no long term difference between uh, what was happening four weeks ago versus what's happening today. Mm. Susan Lee joins me now from Fox Business. Uh, Susan, great to have you with us. And that was a really interesting interview that you did today with Tim Cook. Um, tell us a little bit about, you know, his, I mean, obviously he owns one of the biggest or runs one of the biggest companies in the world that is yeah. so globally intertwined. So what is his take on the impact of this longer term? It was really interesting because Larry Kudlow actually quoted my exclusive with Tim Cook as saying that this is a bifurcation in the market, meaning that on one hand, you're looking at the worst week for the stock market. But on the other hand, you have America's biggest company. It's worth around 5% of the S&P 500. Yeah. Only five companies in history have had that type of influence. And Tim Cook sounding actually positive because things are actually getting better in China. Take a listen, Martha. Yeah. When you look at the, the parts that are done in China, uh, we have reopened factories. So the factories were able to work through the conditions to reopen. They're reopening. They're also in ramp. And so I think of this as sort of the third phase of getting back to normal. And we're in phase three of the, of the ramp mode. And he went on to say that it's a temporary condition, Martha, meaning they might tweak a few knobs, but nothing wholesale when it comes to their supply chain and operating in China. And they've seen this before. They say our supply chain has survived a lot of natural disasters like hurricanes, like fires. It's been intact. It's about resilience. And I think Apple might be a special case as well, since they arguably are the most successful U.S. company to ever penetrate the Chinese market. They get 20 percent of their sales there. But then they're also hobbled by the fact that they assembled more than 50 percent of their iPhones. So they might be a unique case, Martha. But I think the stock market action on Friday also is a positive because they didn't usually panic and fall off the cliff on a Friday on a weekend if there really was a lot of fear. Instead, we actually saw some buying, Martha, in the last 15 to 20 minutes of the trading session. Yeah. I, I mean, that that is interesting. It, you know, it seems to me, you know, when you look at what the statement that Goldman Sachs put out, that they're mm -hmm. basically not going to assume any earnings growth for American companies in 2020 as a result of this. And a number of the firms on Wall Street really sort of, you know, sending signals that I think, obviously, the market overall over the last several days read yeah. as some real caution signals. I think it's kind of tough to know who to believe. Well, we heard from Tim Cook, and he says, look, have things really changed that much in four weeks? Not really. I mean, in fact, I think the jobs number point to a very strong U.S. economy. China isn't falling off a cliff. It seems that like China is actually getting better in containing the coronavirus. You saw the lowest amount of new cases being reported today compared to the 2,000 numbers that you always get. So there is, I would say that what we've seen in SARS and also back in 2003 and also uh, what we saw with 9-11 when stock markets fell 12 to 13 percent each time after that, it t they tend to recover and markets reward those that stick in these tough times. Yeah, I mean, I thought his point was interesting in that he said that, you know, the fundamentals of our business haven't changed and the yeah. business hasn't changed. Um, so it is, in some ways, more like a natural disaster in terms of what you're talking about, an unforeseen impact that hits the market. But right. it really depends on how long the impact lasts and if schools close or theme parks close. And I realize, you know, I'm just sort of playing devil's advocate here because, um, you know, there's a lot of big question marks still to be figured out here. Absolutely. Consumption, although Tim Cook and I would imagine that a lot of people looking at the markets know that the consumption is there. He says the demand is there, but the fact that you had to close production and close the store so you go, can't go and buy your iPhones, that's the problem. It's just delayed consumption probably after this coronavirus is contained. Yeah. I mean, you can see people pulling back, perhaps, if it gets worse, on going to malls. I mean, one of the interesting things, though, is that we have, you know, Internet is how everybody buys most of these things, right? Right. Definitely. Well, we see it, saw that over the holiday period. It was a record holiday shopping period. So consumers are still spending. They feel yeah. wealthy because of a great jobs economy as well. Susan, uh, great interview uh, with Tim Cook today. That was very yeah. interesting to watch. You don't see that very often from him. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Good to have you here tonight. So joining me now.